Hey guys, it's Prince Rich with Rich Technology Group, and in today's video, we're going to talk about AT&T versus Xfinity, or Comcast, as they're also uh, known as. But I think we can say that Xfinity is kind of like, I believe, their new trademark name, but for all intended purposes, we still call them Comcast. So I'm going to talk about AT&T versus Xfinity, the pros, the cons, the differences between the two, and which you may want to look at choosing should both of them arise in your area for your business internet or phone service. So let's jump right into it and get into the AT&T versus Xfinity comparison. Okay, so types of service that the two of them provide, let's just go over that really quickly. AT&T typically provides for internet, obviously they provide analog phone lines and they also provide a uh, hosted voice over IP phone system service. But as far as internet is concerned, they provide <coughs> DSL, which is also known as their Uverse platform, Fiber, which is one of their most popular um, and probably most viable internet types um, in the areas where people need their internet, especially for business operations, and then T1, which you don't really see much, at least I don't see it much. I tend to typically see their DSL product, which is also called Uverse, as well as their fiber circuits, their dedicated um, fiber circuits, high-speed internet circuits. On the Comcast Xfinity side, services available for um, phone is phone, analog phone lines, as well as a um, hosted voice over IP platform that they offer for people that are looking for phone service through Comcast. On the internet side, they offer high-speed broadband, by far their most popular um, product, obviously. Some of you watching this video probably know because you're probably like, oh yeah, I've got Comcast broadband. Um, we even had it for years in the United States in one of our locations in Richmond, um, and we didn't really have any issues with it. And then Comcast also offers um, fiber. They offer a dedicated fiber circuit as well, which is probably you know the front runner comparative to AT&T's fiber circuit. Comcast or Xfinity, as far as I know of, they don't offer any type of DSL or anything that would be a U-verse, a AT&T U-verse comparison. So anyways, let's get right into the, to the hardcore comparisons. Serviceability. What I have found, because I have worked all across the United States with businesses of many different shapes and sizes and industries, is that AT&T tends to have a bigger footprint than Comcast does. Um, part of this is because AT&T's Uverse product is a product that goes over phone line. Um, and I think we can all agree that, you know, where most people may not be able to get very good internet, especially in the boondocks or in rural areas, you can always get a phone line or get phone service, basic phone service somewhere. So because of this, AT&T is typically able to run their Uverse product over the phone lines to virtually anywhere in the United States. So AT&T does have a bigger footprint in that regard as far as their Uverse is concerned or their DSL. Um, Comcast footprint is actually pretty good. Um, we can typically get Comcast broadband to just about any customer in the States. But again, if you're somewhere where you can't get broadband in general from any provider, whether it be Spectrum Business or something like that, and the only thing you can get is DSL or satellite, then Comcast isn't going to be the, isn't going to be the forerunner for you. It's going to probably be an AT&T Uverse, um, which again, may not be great for most businesses. Um, while we're on the subject of serviceability, as far as Comcast and AT&T's fiber product is concerned, fiber is typically available just about anywhere through any of those providers, through Xfinity or AT&T. The problem is, is that fiber can be really, really expensive. So even if you per se can't get, let's say, Comcast broadband and AT&T Uverse DSL is not enough for your business, but you find out that AT&T Fiber or Comcast Fiber or both is available in your area, it may not matter if you're a small business and you can't justify paying $600 to $900 a month. So again, for the sake of serviceability for this conversation, AT&T tends to have the better footprint as far as what they can and can't service in comparison to um, Comcast in the United States. <clears throat> Price comparison. We just touched on that a little bit, but let's dive into that a little bit deeper. AT&T's Uverse tends to be anywhere from like, let's say $50 to $70 a month for their Uverse um, DSL, but it's DSL. Um, it might be great for some businesses if you're running just a small business and all you need to do is browse the internet and access the web and you're not running um, voice over IP phones, 
AT&T's UVerse DSL may be good enough for you, but if you're running like voice over IP phones, it's just not going to cut it. And neither is their T1. You really need something like broadband or fiber. And um, price-wise, if you can get price-wise, I guess we would say that Comcast is the winner here. In an area where you can get both providers and get their full packages, Comcast is going to be the winner for you as far as price is concerned because Comcast broadband is not only going to be better, even though Comcast broadband may only be like $10 or $15 a month over AT&T's UVerse DSL, it's going to be significantly better internet than AT&T's UVerse DSL. So, I mean, even if it was $20 more for Comcast broadband versus like the AT&T UVerse DSL, I'm sorry, that's $20 more well spent. Um, the other thing is, is AT&T doesn't offer any broadband. It's only DSL or fiber. Fiber, while it is better than broadband, it's a dedicated circuit. So you don't have to worry about losing speeds and things like that when people's kids come home or when everybody in the business park is, uh, you know, when people's kids come home from school and they're using the internet or in your business park during peak times when everybody's on their computers, like right before or after lunch, it's a dedicated circuit, the fiber, it's significantly more expensive than a Comcast broadband circuit. So again, if you're in an area where you can get all packages for both AT&T and Xfinity, and price is the concern, go with the Xfinity broadband because you're going to get the best bang for the buck. You're going to get more than enough high-speed internet that suffices for your internet needs, your voice over IP if you're using a host and voice over IP system. But more importantly, I mean, you're, you're going to be paying significantly less. You might be paying, for example, at the time of this video, a uh, Comcast broadband um, starter package. At the time of this video, a 25 megabyte download over 5 megabyte upload goes for about $75 a month. I mean, yeah, you get a 100 megabyte uh, fiber circuit with AT&T. I mean, I'm sorry, not a 100 megabyte. You could get a 25 megabyte fiber circuit with AT&T. That's going to cost you maybe like $250 to $300 a month. So where you can get both, the pricing with at and with uh, Comcast, with Xfinity, is always going to be better than AT&T. The better bang for your buck for the amount of megabytes or bandwidth that you're getting. <clears throat> the next point, customer service. This is a touchy one, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. While I personally like Comcast better, and I work with them more, I think that AT&T is going to have the better customer service over Comcast. I'm not going to go into horror stories, good or bad, but for those of you who are watching this, you know Comcast has been hailed as not the best for customer service in the industry, no matter where you are in the United States. Um, so for customer service, I'm just going to sum this one up and say, in my endeavors, from everything from new service to you know questions getting answered and not having problems with installation and things like that, AT&T tends to have the better customer service. While Comcast, I think Head & Shoulders has better quality of service than AT&T any day, Xfinity service is better, what they deliver, their customer service could use some improvement. And I won't go into details on that, but just you guys know what I do for a living. Take my word for it. <clears throat> installation. And by installation, we're really talking about like what you can expect as far as lead times on installation. Like how long is it going to take for somebody to get to you on installation and things like that. Um, I would say that Comcast tends to be the best on installation. Um, AT&T probably comes in as a close second to Xfinity Comcast. However, I will say this, Comcast can be a real bear when it comes to installation issues and when it comes to like what we call construction blocks, where Comcast will come back and say, hey, you know, we can deliver the service to you in this area, but there's going to be a delay on construction because there's some construction needed to deliver service to your suite or to your building. We tend to see that Comcast tends to be the bad one when it comes to the delay, whereas AT&T may only take like two to four weeks with construction delays. We've seen Comcast take as long as a month to, to a couple of months, even as long as three months or more if the construction requires permits with the county and things like that. More importantly, let's forget about delays. I had a customer just recently whose client had Xfinity broadband across the street. They had Xfinity up to as high as 500 megabit packages along with cable TV. And the client was quoted exactly $16,300 that they had to pay 
to get the service from across the street to their home office for their business. Um, that is just a bit extreme. That's not always the case, but I've not seen that very often with AT&T. So I would say that as far as installation is concerned, as far as having to go, not having to go through hoops and things like that, or be hit with some weird email or notice of saying, hey, we can get you service if you're willing to pay almost $20,000. I think AT&T tends to be the better as far as when a problem arises, who can deliver the service with not only less headache, but without costing you like your firstborn or everything that you've got in your personal savings account or something like that. So um, anyways, that concludes the video of AT&T versus Xfinity Comcast, who is the best internet uh, service provider for your business. If you're somebody who's watching this video and you're debating between the two, or you'd like to find out which one of the two or which internet provider in general is available for your business in your area, don't forget, I not only represent AT&T and Xfinity Comcast, I represent all providers. So give me a shout, drop me an email or give me a call. I'd love to help. Our service is free. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll check you guys again soon in the next video.